Good morning, North Central. It's my privilege to be with you today to lift high the name of Jesus. Let's praise his name together today, no matter where you are. If you're on the couch, if you're in your bedroom, if you're uh, listening as you're outside somewhere, wherever you are, let's join our hearts and our voices together and praise the name of the Lord. I cast my mind Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body Drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still and all. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Then on the third, at break of dawn, the Son of Heaven rose again. O oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar, for oh, Christ. Oh, Lord. 
Welcome to California and it is quarantine central around here. This is week four of shelter in place for the Cannon family. So all seven of us are currently in about 1100 square feet at our house in the Bay Area. So I'm at home. You can see I've got my slippers on, um, just staying comfortable, but wanted to share something with you guys today that just means a lot to my heart during the season of our lives. Earlier, um, Dr. Amy, one of the amazing, brilliant professors at North Central, actually shared a quote on Facebook that I want to share and that inspired what I want to do with you today. And it was by Nora Ephron, who totally had to look, look up who that was. I had no idea. But what I love about cooking is that after a hard day, there's something comforting about the fact that if you melt butter and add flour and then hot stock, it'll get thick. It's a sure thing. It's a sure thing in a world where nothing is sure. It has a mathematical certainty in a world where those of us who long for some kind of certainty are forced to settle for crossword puzzles. That just spoke to me that day because this idea of longing for information and what's actually going on and what's the end date and all of those things, but we have to kind of settle for crossword puzzles and TikTok, which I have spent a ridiculous amount of time watching TikTok videos. If I start making them, y'all send help. Cause I don't, I don't need to be making TikTok videos. I'm 38. Mm -hmm. But the other part of this quote that really stuck out with me is the idea of melting butter and adding flour and then stock. Okay, so what that's actually called is a roux. So welcome to my kitchen. And we're gonna make a roux today. Now, the roux is actually the base of four of the five mother sauces in French cooking. And yes, we love Disney. Can't wait till it's open again. So, you basically take fat and flour. Now, alone, I mean, I guess you could argue that butter on its own, if you're really desperate, you could just enjoy a stick of butter. 
I would not recommend that. Flour on its own is definitely not something that you want to just get into and start eating by itself. So what about it? Like what about the fact that you just have fat, in this case through butter, and you just have the basic of a starch with the, um, with the flour makes it amazing. Like what would possibly make that comforting? In French cooking, I mentioned there's mother sauces. They're basically the start of everything else. And four of the five of them start with a roux. If you've ever made gravy or your grandma made really good gravy for a turkey dinner or with fried chicken or something like that, this is how it starts. If you've ever had good gumbo, okay, if you're from the South, this is how it starts. You just take butter or fat of some sort and you melt it down. And then you take an equal amount of flour. Oops, there's already a measuring cup in there. And here's the deal. Like I said, either alone are not gonna make a great sauce. But, once you start mixing them together, turn down my heat some, you get this. Now this is the start of a roux. It looks disgusting. Like, disgusting. If you to just taste this alone, it tastes kind of weird. It's a bit like uncooked bread or pasta or something like that, but it's, it's, it's just not all that it's supposed to be if you just let it sit there and you don't do anything with it. But as you cook it together, you get your roux. Now here's the next part of what that author was saying. Once you get your roux set, and I'm gonna make a light sauce, so I'm not gonna cook it for very long. If I were making a gumbo, I would let this like concentrate down and get really dark and brown the butter and the flour together. But I'm just gonna take, instead of the hot stock today, I'm taking milk, okay? Because I'm making a different sauce. and you mix it in. We're just gonna let this sit and I'll show you what happens. Now, here's a verse. It's in Romans, chapter six, verse five through 11. Since we've been united with him, Jesus, in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. So now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. See, to me, there's a rue in that. The beginning of something amazing. To me, the rue in that is the death and the resurrection of Jesus. That is the start of all goodness in cooking. And that is the start of all goodness in our lives. When we recognize those two elements, if you think about it, you could take them on their own, the death of Jesus. And you know what? It's a really nice gesture for someone to die for you. But other humans have died in our name as soldiers and as you know, fighting for freedom and those kind of things. So just the death of Christ alone is, is, you know, it's the butter. Resurrection, well, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, but does that change my life personally? Just a resurrection. It's like the flower. But when you put those two things together, you can add almost anything to it. And it's going to start to become amazing. Now this is going to become Alfredo sauce. I'm going to add some Parmesan, going to add some garlic. 
and it is going to be amazing goodness. The fat and the flour, it is the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Start there. Start every single day of this season right there with the two core elements that create the goodness in your life. There's more than one sauce. There's more than one thing that you can do with a roux and every single one of us, we're gonna come out of this experience feeling a little different or having learned something different. But here's what we do know. If we each start with that roux, the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, it's gonna create something amazing. We know that there's a certainty in that, just like there's a certainty in the scientific nature of making a mother sauce. So, President Hagen used to talk about the days that we have to rotate between the cross and the empty tomb. Some days in our life, we need to just be at the foot of the cross and we need to recognize this is what Jesus has done for me and that he has died on the cross, that my sin is nailed to the cross and that I am forgiven and that I now identify with the cross and I am no longer a slave to sin. And then there are other days in our lives where we have to sit in awe at the empty tomb. And we need to see that resurrection power and glory of Jesus and that we too have been raised to life. We've been made new. And right now we live in this kind of eschological tension between what was done for us, what it means in our present day, and what it means for our future. Right now we can still apply the death and the resurrection, the cross and the empty tomb. Put those two concepts, those two truths and realities together and allow what's being poured into us in this season to create something amazing. And then we sit in hope and anticipation of the fact that now that we have died to sin, we've identified with Jesus on the cross and he has raised us to life internally, that that will be an external reality one day. That is the blessed hope. And it's amazing. And this is going to be dinner. <laughs> Stay safe out there and make sure that in everything you are doing in every single day and every single class and all of your study, your finals, your papers, all of that stuff, that you constantly return to the beginning of what is amazing, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And if you ever need to make really good gravy, start with the butter and the flour. I promise it actually works.